Like, yeah, he did awful things, but he did so much for the community. <laughs> it's kind of how it seemed. And, like, he was, like, uh, like, all these celebrities were, like, we were so devastated that he passed. We didn't know what to do. But then we met Jeffrey and Ghislaine, and everything was right again. <laughs> Well, by the goddamn grace of God, we did it. <laughs> We're back in a in a uh, in an undisclosed location in Abu Ghraib. <laughs> 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 I, God damn it! In an undisclosed, undisclosed Mossad black site, I we've returned. Did they shut that down? I guarantee, probably not. Just like if they're not torturing brown people, they're fucking kids there now. Like I said, just because they shut Epstein Island down, it's, it's where Epstein moved to. It did, it, He's not dead. He's in Abu Ghraib with, the, <laughs> with, with on the what they got the guy on the rack. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's also fucking kids there too. Of course. How do you think they get him to talk? Oh man, this is uh, this has been seven months. It's Jesus been a while. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It was before this? We were watching. Uh, we were watching Caucasian Rick, White Boy Rick, and uh, <coughs> funny enough, he just got out of prison. Look at this guy. What a fucking nightmare that man is. <laughs> is that Bill Cosby? <laughs> No, this was uh, one of like this is like the Grim Reaper of De <laughs> of Detroit in the eighties. So like apparently White Boy Rick snitched on this guy like Nate. Oh, that's the guy in the Nate, movie. Nate Boonecraft was like was like the Grim Reaper of uh, Detroit back in the eighties. Like apparently, yeah. No, I'm just saying I can't believe this. I thought that was Bill Cosby. Thirty murders. So <laughs> Jesus Christ, stand up guy. A, a real hero. He was. He was also um, the won the tough guy competitions back in the day, like the bare knuckle fighting. Oh, really? Yeah. This is just a fucking Adonis of a man. He's a he's a Renaissance man. And uh, he, I guess, he worked with White Boy Rick, but White Boy Rick snitched on him. And uh, even him, he is advocating f for to get Rick out of jail. I mean, he's out now, but as I say, that it's funny. Like even um, Larry Hoover. Yes, uh, was advocating to get White Boy Rick out of jail, which is insane. Larry Hoover sounds like the name of some mayor who smoked crack. No, that was. Um, I know it's not. It's uh, not Larry Hogan. Larry Hogan's the Maryland governor. But um, oh no, I know exactly who you're talking Cole, about. It's like a four letter name. You know what? Uh, we have Rob uh, Ford. Rob Ford. Rob See, Ford. four letter name. I was like Colt Ford, something like that. Rob Ford was. Um, what what would have happened to Farley if he wouldn't have died? He would have ran for some sort of government position and would have gotten it. That would have been amazing. I mean, look, you got Donald Trump, you got Caitlyn Jenner, and uh, who's that gay guy? P uh, Pete Buttigieg? No, Mike Pence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the secretly gay guy. The secretly gay guy. Yeah, he's uh, he looks like a, a Ken doll that got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what's uh, what's the hot topic this week? What's the hot topic? We were. Dude, I'm so rusty. I'm so out of it. Uh, you know what is the big thing? Um, well, we. You know what? Given the current thing is Ukraine, I just want to make the official stance that unfiltered and offensive stands with Putin and the Russian government. Yeah, in their no righteous one, conquest and denazification of Ukraine. Let's let's get one thing straight. You don't care about Ukraine. I do. You don't care about Ukraine. You don't. After Will Smith slapped oh, yeah, Chris that Rock, too. nobody gave a fuck about Ukraine anymore. No. It, it was, is it was COVID for a while and then Ukraine. And then what well, yeah, once Ukraine got invaded, COVID was over. COVID was over. You know, the masks are all Fauci's really trying to stay relevant. Well, he's yeah. he's gonna make a comeback when he invents the new COVID. <laughs> he uh yeah he's he, he, what what do they call him? He, what do they say about him? He never met a camera he didn't like something like uh, that. No, it's uh there's nothing more dangerous than to be between <laughs> Anthony Fauci and a camera. <laughs> that used to be the saying for Chuck Schumer. 
apparently. <laughs> Dude, the most disgusting thing I've ever seen was uh, what's the uh, the late night guy? Uh, Colbert. Yeah, fucking dancing with him. Vex. Oh. And and like no, they were at some kind of like garden party, and they were like dancing together and like high fiving yes, each other, that. and it's like. That's a conflict of interest. I'm pretty sure he gives him some points, you know, some talking points on his show. Yeah. Whenever Stephen Colbert openly wept after Trump won, I'm like, well, late night's never going to be funny again. No. It's never well, going to be funny again. Conan held out for a bit. Conan's not bad. But also, Conan's no longer on late night. He's, like, doing a podcast now. But yeah, no. Oh, he's a right wing fascist. <laughs> I guess he, you know, he did what John Stewart did. He's kind of fading into the background right now. They need to get Alex Jones out of Guantanamo Bay. Alex Jones seemed to be the next late night late show host. Yeah, nothing, <gasps> nothing, nothing is better than taking your shirt off and screaming at you know Sandy Hook survivors <laughs> that you know they work for the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, That's, no, you got to get in their face. Get angry. That's, take your shirt off. It's it signified the change in a generation of conspiracy theorists when you went from going to the face of a Sandy Hook parent and screaming at them and telling them you made this shit up, and saying, "Well, these numbers don't add, exactly add up in this one little county here in Georgia." Yeah, there's a big difference. What and I think what we should do to get back to that is Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy, should. Yeah. What? Why did? The, the way it sounded is like he screamed the N-word a bunch of times. Like, that's how they're treating him. Yeah. No, what he should do is he should get naked, go smoke crack again for the first time in like 20 years. Who? Uh, Mike Lindell. <laughs> you don't know that? He was a fucking crackhead. That's hilarious. And then he pulled, him, pulled himself up by his bootstraps and started a pillow company. A, a Trump pillow company. <laughs> See, it was the Reagan era that fucked him up. The crack era. Got yeah. Him. <laughs> he said yes when he should have said no. And, uh, you know, now it's all coming That man was on circle. it. It started because one day he was on his knees doing things you do for crack. And I was thinking, man, my knees are really getting tired. <laughs> and I was like, I could really use a good pillow under my knees right now. <clears throat> and there came the my pillow. So what? So why do they hate him so much? Because uh, he, he loves Trump. And he's uh, really spearheading the... Um, he's still spearheading the Stop the Steal movement. <laughs> he's still like... We're, <laughs> Any day now, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get the Supreme get it in front of the Supreme Court. There's still this is how mentally unwell we are as a country. There's people in this country, and more than a few, that think Trump is still the president. That think Trump is ne is like secretly running the country still. Oh, definitely not running things. Well, I mean, He's the rightful president. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, eighty one million votes. Eighty one million votes. <laughs> that is funny though. A lot of mentally ill people. But what a nice life that must be. Just to not be there and to like live that reality. That, to be in charge. That, that every day is Friday night. Who was it? It was like, there was some, it was like the Portuguese dictator, I think. Back in like the 60s. His mind went and they had like a secret revolution while he was at the summer home. <laughs> and they just kept him at the summer home for the rest of his life. 12 years after the revolution had gone over and they'd become a, so they a republic. Him, so they kept him captive, basically? They, they kept him... It was like the Truman Show for him, <laughs> which is what we need to do. I feel like it already is that. Eh, kind of, but the problem is, is that Joe Biden's like out front making decisions because clearly Kamala's not making them. No, she's... Um, I mean, she's getting trotted out like a fucking show pony and then she'll say something dumb and they're like, okay, back in the cage. Yeah. Same thing with... I mean, She'll say something just as mindless as Sloppy Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he'll go out there and be like, we're starting nuclear war next week. And then the, his handlers are like, no, we're not. We support the Iranian <laughs> people. <laughs> he did say that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, the world is ending. The world is ending. But we're having Leah Thomas on the show next week <gasps> to, <laughs> to hash out. <laughs> Women's sports are stupid anyways. They are stupid. Sports are stupid. This will make it more interesting. I might, you know what? If there's men playing women's sports, I might actually start watching them. Imagine if you had men in the WNBA. <clears throat> they they'd actually might start making more than negative fifty million dollars a year. LaRonda James joins that, the what a what a great fucking movie that was. Joanna Man, that was such ahead of its time, such ahead of its time. 
You couldn't make that movie today. <laughs> Can't make that movie today. That's like everything, man. Well, the, the <clears throat> reason... The reason they can't make good comedy movies anymore is because comedy movies don't crush in the box office. No. They don't. It, they're, I mean, think about uh, Half-Baked, which is a fucking iconic comedy movie, tanked in the box office. They're ca- they end up being cult classics. Yeah, they're tanking the box office, and they, they count, you know, they're counting on DVD sales. It doesn't. Well, they, well, they don't have that. They're, no one's buying DVDs anymore. And your best bet is, like, getting picked up by, like, you know Netflix or something like that right yeah and, and it's like because, you can't bank on being memorable 15 years from now and when they put it on Netflix you got to fucking walk that tight rope of uh oh, gay trans black pedophile uh, you know you, can, you can't be funny it's yeah it, it sucks yeah I don't know man it's pretty gay what's uh what, what's the funniest show on TV right now I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't watch TV. I don't either. But like, what's uh, what's the funniest movie that came out recently? Um, mem- Santa Inc. Memorable. <laughs> Dude, I I refuse to watch. It. Apparently, it is like the worst show ever. What are you talking about? It's got Jew. It's got Jews be, doing Christmas. That's got to be funny, right? What was funny is like. Uh, <clears throat> Two white people put out a show and then it tanked, and they're like, "It's white supremacy." <laughs> what? <laughs> so, <clears throat> just like uh, the reason people disapprove of Kamala and Joe is because of white supremacy. White supremacy. Well, what happened during the two terms of Obama? Did those people just not show up to vote? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, they're like well, we're 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 cool with this black president, but this, this old black white guy, but this old white guy with this know? black Muslim president and his man wife, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> See, Twitter used to be so fun. Yeah, when you could just you know literally, it's kind of like what Facebook is now. Like you got well, they're kind of cracking down, but boomers really let it fly on on on, on the book. <laughs> <laughs> they do really. It's. It, it used to be one of my favorite pastimes was harassing boomers on Facebook. Thank God my father doesn't know how to use technology. The, the <laughs> oh my fucking, gosh. The horror that he would... The um, horror that he would unleash on the internet. Unleash on the internet. I mean, there would be a billion typos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There'd be a lot of symbols used. I mean... In lieu of words. <laughs> it would be like hieroglyphics. <laughs> Speaking of uh, symbols instead of words, uh, Cracker Barrel, you know, that play. <laughs> yes. I go there to get a bacon, egg, and cheese. Uh, yeah, Cracker Barrel, that f- fine American cuisine. <clears throat> you know what? Let's look this article up. Pull it up. I didn't think it was real either. So, um, Cracker Barrel... You want to help me out here, Nick? What does what, what uh, Cracker Barrel got going Cracker on? Cracker Barrel has a code word that's used in some restaurants by employees to refer to black people. I don't remember what you found we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, the word to be. It's the N-word. It's the N-word. <laughs> Secret. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. It's not. It's actually funnier than that. <clears throat> yeah. Cracker Barrel employees use code word. I wonder if it's the same word that I for, used for, for black customers. Is from an ex an ex hostess went on uh TikTok. So we should all listen to her because she uh she, is she some some fat white bitch did a TikTok. She's is she neurodivergent also? So yeah. Um so if you wanna you know if you wanna throw a slur out there and not get in trouble, Cracker Barrel has the answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> so at Cracker Barrel it, they refer to black people as Canadians and as the Mondays. Because nobody likes to deal with the Mondays. Someone please comment and tell me if you know what that means. I have no clue. I don't know. That's my guess, too. I have no idea what that means. Someone please tell me. Someone, if if you've worked at Cracker Barrel or you've been to a Cracker Barrel or you've shot up fentanyl in a Cracker Barrel, (laughs) (laughs) let me know why that is. That's a fun one. That was a fun one. That's a fun, you know, they're, they're. Dewey's found scrolling through the, uh, they're, the feeds. They're, they're taking too many. Um, they're taking too many fun words away from people. Yeah. <clears throat> What's a new one that we can't say anymore? Um, I'm pretty sure soon you're not gonna allow to 
say cuck anymore. Oh. But now you, uh, they're going to be like, you're not allowed to say cuck. That's offensive to Will Smith. Uh, now you have to say male feminist. <laughs> <laughs> man in open relationship. Man, yeah. Strong, masculine man. That's what you have to say in place of it. Yeah, the most, yeah most of the people w- that have to- toxic masculinity right now are women. <laughs> That's a shame. You know, they fucking dunked on, uh, I think it was Adele. They dunked on Adele because she went to some kind of like uh, award show or something like that and said she was proud to be a woman. And then everyone on Twitter was like, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. But, um. Yeah, I remember that. That was like, what, a month or two ago? Yeah, the world's ending. Yeah. They weren't happy that she also like, did she, didn't she lose weight? Yeah, she looks good. They were probably unhappy that she lost weight. She looked good before. Well, luckily... Like, yeah, luckily, she wasn't bad looking being a large woman either. Well, luckily, uh, Lizzo is saving the day with that new uh, show. What is it? Big Girls? Big Girls. She's surrounding herself with women that, you know, uh, look like they know their way around a funnel cake. She, she, she's doing the, uh, like the, the classic trick that women do. They'll surround themselves with, like, uglier women. Yeah. Um... So she's surrounding herself with slightly less fat women. You know, she has to surround herself with fatter women oh. to make herself look better. I feel like that's what it is. But it's like she had a hard time doing that to find one that still had both feet. <laughs> You're going to have After a hard time, time doing that. Diabetes. Finding one that will actually make it through the show without having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, like isn't that, I mean, I mean, you take uh, drug overdose out of the question. Isn't heart disease pretty much right up there, number one? Oh, it is. Yeah, so like. Except for COVID. Why, why is that it? How is that an like? How is that an argument or a debate? Like, I guarantee you where you don't get heart disease from is exercise and eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how you get it. It's a one way trip to live hard and die early. Yeah, it's a rock and roll lifestyle. Being fat, <laughs> you're better off, you know, dying of cirrhosis of the liver. At least you'll have fun being a drunk. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's not gonna be fun just shoveling, you know, cakes down your gullet. Jesus Christ. And eating everything you want. Do you know how disgusting it was to uh, go out to lunch with Jim? Do you remember Fat Jim? He yes, I remember Fat company? Jim. Dude. He looked like uh, Chris shit. Pratt when he was fat. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like shit, yeah. He looked like fat Chris Pratt. <clears throat> Dude, this motherfucker would get those uh, large uh, cup lids from McDonald's and do just like a mountain of ketchup. <laughs> on it with like a small so he'd pump like a small fry he'd pump the ketchup onto that yeah because, because the cups were too small uh, yeah i did not know that he would also this is hysterical and well he was like 400 pounds and he goes to mcdonald's and orders like four cheeseburgers and takes all the bread off and he goes i'm losing weight <laughs> <laughs> he's doing keto <laughs> i'm doing keto and it's like bro <laughs> He's like, I don't get it. I'm, I, I've gained five pounds this week. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's a big fucking mystery to me too. I hear he's back this side of the uh, the Ohio River again now, back in this part of the country again. Wait, can you smell him? <laughs> he did have an an odor to him. <laughs> you could get on a job site, Jim. Yeah. Where are you at, buddy? His, Lee Lee has another one. <laughs> Reed. <laughs> he does. He it's funny, he gets it on us. He smells just like his dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's passed down. Yeah, they, they, they smell like fucking <laughs> <laughs> I hope they watch this episode. I don't care. I will burn that bridge. Think we should send it to him? <laughs> I'm sure we'll see it. I think he subscribed. Cool. <clears throat> Those were crazy times back when Jim was around. Uh, yeah. We had so many people that... <laughs> we had so many form with DUIs. <laughs> there was like, what, three or four of them, I think? Most of the people... This is funny. Like, most of It was the, a crazy time. Most of the people that were smart enough to run a job didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, active warrants. <laughs> I hear it was only crazier before that. Oh, dude. When I first started um, there... I think everyone had a felony except for like James and Doug. And that was it. 
Like, well, like there is like everyone. Doug has a secret life that he never told anybody else about that he left behind in Ohio. <laughs> Dude, I there are some people in this company who I've known for four years, and I don't know them at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't, I don't have a clue who they are. Well, it's like your teachers in in elementary school, like before they started telling you that they were gay. Now, dude, it's it's like now kindergarten teachers are fucking having a stroke because they can't tell their five year old students that they want to suck dick. Well, the other thing is, it goes the other way around, and we're faced with this problem of you have you know these male teachers who are just smashing pussy all weekend, and they can't just like come into class and say like, "Hey, smell my fingers." <laughs> they can't say, "Hey." Bobby, tell your mom I said hi. I mean, hey, if if a, if a gay teacher can go in there and you know talk about his bleached asshole, I think uh, you know a Chad <laughs> teacher could go in there and talk about all the muff he had that weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's and and that's equality. Exactly. And there's that's outrage on both sides. That's yeah. It's it is funny. It is yeah. It's like, what are we do? What what are we doing? Why? Why do you want to get to know these children anyways, first of all? You know what I mean? You should be wanting to just like, it's like a race to the finish line every morning. Just just go to your job, not educate them, and then go home. That's what teachers do nowadays anyways, not educate the kids. They can't, the kids can't read. Have beer at lunch. The kids just can't Just take read. the edge off. <laughs> what was it? You know who Mark Robinson is? Our lieutenant governor? Mm -mm. I need to find the quote, quote but I want to say he like, once said is like we need the schools to start teaching kids how to read and write and not how to go to hell <laughs> dude he is awesome and it sounds i like, hope he runs for senate and it sounds like something that was said in the 60s no, that's something that was said 60 days ago well also this this is a <laughs> this is a black guy this is our first black lieutenant governor Are you serious? who said this that's he is amazing i love really him so funny. much <laughs> he is the first politician so first guessing, person i have ever so wholeheartedly voted for he's a liberal <laughs> that's it. It, it it's i love seeing that just like seeing caitlin jenner as a hardcore republican exactly she goes out there stomps out there in those size 16 stilettos <laughs> yeah sean i think gay marriage is gross <laughs> <laughs> i fucking love it now she works for fox news how long and, till we get her on and, and i couldn't be happier at it four thousand dollars to get that bitch on cameo well if she's on fox news i think i know how we could do it and we'll talk about that later fox news what a fucking that's a good way to bring some levity to the channel yeah that's a good way to broil your brain let's, say, let's put fox news you on know loop on seeing the stuff that they've done with cnn plus oh that fucking bombed which okay so i know that like anderson cooper has a show on parenting i want to know what brian stelter got i really hope brian stelter got some show on like I don't know, like dating advice. It's a cooking show. <laughs> dating <laughs> advice. Uh, how to pick up, how to be a, <laughs> Brian Stelter, the pickup artist. <laughs> Brian Stelter gets hair plugs. <laughs> and he goes around to every part of the country that has like, you know, ancient like hair and like wig technology, but he just can't, it just looks like shit. He just can't get it <laughs> It just right. progressively gets worse. <laughs> you start, he started looking like shit at 25 and he hadn't gotten much better. Yeah. What? What is he like? Twenty eight. He's like he looks terrible. He's like thirty five. But yeah, no, he looks awful. He aged like a president, <laughs> <laughs> except for Trump because he just doesn't care. Trump went in reverse. He doesn't. Trump, Trump cut the McDonald's out and he lost like fifty, like thirty pounds. To him, like for, for Trump, the presidency was like a vacation. Yeah. Well, did you hear what his McDonald's order was? It was massive. He, he drank like what twenty fucking diet cokes a day. He dr drank a shitload of diet cokes. He. You know, as I said, his McDonald's order was just massive. It was like 2,000 calories on its own. <laughs> um, that man is so fucking funny. This, this, this is how... Donald Trump was our first black president. <laughs> and <I'm, laughs> Elaborate. And I'm going to tell you why. So I think it was Clemson or some football team won the national championship and they were going to go to the White House for like a big celebratory <laughs> feast. Yes, I remember this. This motherfucker got him cold filet of fishes, uh, the double decker KFC <laughs> sandwiches, and like Taco Bell, and was like, "You're welcome." <laughs> <laughs> it's like you motherfucker. Like you yeah. could have anything you want in that motherfucker. You know they have the best chefs in the world, probably in the White House, and he's like, 
fuck it. Get a KFC at 8 in the morning, and they'll be here at 4 in the afternoon and just put it on golden plates. Yeah. But watch them closely so they don't take them. <laughs> That's basically what he did. <laughs> you know, I never thought about that. <clears throat> what an asshole. <sighs> I don't know. That happened back before I was actually caring and paying attention. I was like, ah, oh, I, I remember mm. seeing that. I'm like, that is really funny. I wish I was paying attention to him back in 2015 and 2016. Um... I love the debates. The debates. See, were that's great. the thing. It's like I completely. The debates went completely over my head. I was the just debates like, yeah. were funny because he had that one debate where he just like <clears throat> couldn't catch his breath. Like this, he had like the sniffles. He was like, <sighs> and like in the microphone the whole time while he was pacing back and forth from like Hillary. Oh yeah, where she said that he was stalking her. Yeah, but the, I bet both of them couldn't wait to get out of there and go to Little St. James. <clears throat> that was right about that time. Yeah. And uh, he was on the plane too. Yeah, nobody talks about that. Yeah, just like fucking uh, Jimmy Savile. Great documentary, by the way. I would recommend. Great man. That. See, that <laughs> that's how the documentary made it seem. Like, yeah, he did awful things, but he did so much for the community. <laughs> it's kind of how it seemed. And like he was like, uh, like all these celebrities were like, we were so devastated that he passed. We didn't know what to do. But then we met Jeffrey and Ghislaine, and everything was right again. <laughs> it was basically how it was. Yeah. All these like, yeah. It, to give you some context, this guy in England in the six, like I guess sixties through the two thousands, was as famous as The Rock is today. Yeah, like everyone loved him. This no one didn't know who this motherfucker was. Yeah, and he was just raping with impunity for forty years. And, yeah, you know, probably with you know with the royals and close friends with Margaret Thatcher. Um, but it's the same thing with Epstein. Like all these like powerful people, and then like after he died, just like poof, none of it. Yeah, and then his uh. <clears throat> His was his French partner got uh, suicided in his cell as well, and so now like it's over, like you don't see anything in the news about uh, Ghislaine anymore. Well, that's because we just gotta wait until um, we have to wait till Russia gets out of Ukraine. Until Alex Jones tells <laughs> us who's who's the next one to go after. Uh, he wasn't wrong. Until Alex Jones calls the next one ten years in advance. See, that's what sucks about him. It's like he was like dead on the money about that shit. But then all this other stuff, it's like, dude. I think the big thing that killed a lot of it, well, I didn't believe him for a while, but it was like Sandy Hook really. The, the, really way, the way he explained it, he didn't directly attack anybody. When it happened, because like when you get to that point where you literally question everything the way he was, people were sending him stuff after Sandy Hook happened, like, ooh, looked at this. And all he did was like, hmm, maybe this is something to look into. But his fans were so fucking insane. They just attacked. And even he was telling them, like, please stop fucking doing well, this. What's the thing a lot of people don't realize is, like, yeah, he organized January 6th, but there's a lot of footage of him out on, like, a balcony with a megaphone. It's like, get out of the building. Don't go into the building. You well, can't go in there. Well, he didn't have his shirt off, so they didn't take him serious. Yeah. Carbon. That was... <laughs> Carbon. <laughs> we're terraforming the planet. Dude, that's... I, I tell you what, I would... Pay, I would take out a fucking business loan to get that man on the, on the show just once. That would be pretty amazing. That would be funny. Sponsored oh, by Blue Chew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have no sponsors today. He's probably got some kind of vitamin that he sells in his store that makes your dick three times bigger. <laughs> but it only works with alcohol. Because <laughs> he's not going to not drink. <laughs> I like every podcast he goes on, he drinks like a fifth of fucking liquor. Yeah. Every time and uh, basically just hijacks the show for four hours. It's... And then, and then like at two o'clock in the morning after going for five hours, he goes, all right, so y'all want to go get some steaks? <laughs> no, get the fuck out, man. <laughs> Dude, yeah. No, that's... Well, that's how Trump is too. He just like kind of takes over the show. Well, whenever he's yeah. on a show. But still, he like takes it over. It's like, this is my show now. I mean, he, <clears throat> right or wrong, when he speaks, people do listen. The only time Alex Jones will shut up is if uh, Joe Rogan's in his presence. And sometimes that doesn't even work. And, and makes him. And yeah, no, he'll keep going. Especially like the drunker he gets to. Yeah. Which is, 
fun. <clears throat> He's a funny motherfucker, man. <clears throat> yeah, man. I hope I can keep fucking doing this for once in a while. It's pretty sick. You know, I got, got some the, fun uh, people on. I got the uh, the little one coming soon. No, don't tell him that. That's about as vague as I'm gonna be. Oh, okay. Most people know, but no, I'm not gonna. There's too many fucking weirdos out in the world. Yeah. No offense. I'm offense. <laughs> you know who you are. But yeah, no, there's too many crazy people out there. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to give out too much information. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else is going on. I'll have to see, which I might have to. I don't mind cutting through some of this if I have to. Um, what else happened? Yeah, the slap and uh, <laughs> I'll point up in the air so you know when we're certain shit. <laughs> um. Oh shit. Uh. Uh oh. Proud Boys leader confessed. Which Proud Boys leader is he? He's not. Confessed to organizing attack on Congress. And Stelter. Has agreed to cooperate with prosecutors in one of the most significant cases to emerge from the insurrection. All right, I can't. The president of a local proud boy. Oh, local ca- chapter. All right, I can't listen to Joy Reid for very long. That I hot just, bag of I wind. Just can't do it. She wears a different hat every episode. I never. Hmm. Her, I mean, her hair. Oh yeah. <laughs> boom boom. Yeah. Yeah, that hot blast of reality. It's tough, man. I'm fucking rusty, dude. I haven't done this in a long time. It's okay. You just kind of like ease into it like, you know, a latex skimp suit. I will say, I am uh, doing stand-up again next week. That's awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and maybe I'll start tagging along again before long. I don't know. Yeah, I'll be at Dead Crow. You can do the uh, Thursday open mic? I'm going to do the Thursday open mic at Dead Crow. God damn, it's been a while since I've... Been. It's but been I a have, minute. But I have new shit. I've dude every... All of my old jokes, I'm shelving. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... I've kind of had enough of them. But yeah, I got all new shit. I'll be there Thursday. And surprisingly, I will not be intoxicated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. But no, I've done Dead Crow straight before. Um, who's going to be there this weekend? Well, the pretty week is pretty much. I don't over. know. Is it someone to, well, you don't want to burn any bridges. I was about to say, well, you don't want to harass whoever it is. It's not some loser. No, I'm not going to harass anybody. I don't have the time for that. Should we start our own version of the proud boys to harass comics? We don't like, uh, we don't have to, we can just do that anyways. <laughs> what the fuck are they going to do? <laughs> What, they're going to fucking... No, you, I'm not, never mind. <laughs> I just keep thinking about get, back to that loser that one time at... Uh, da, 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 fuck. At the brewery. I don't remember that guy's name. Which brewery? Um, Sour Barn. That one guy who's just like all sunburn up. Oh, That fucking fuck. dork. I'm not going to... That's why I'm gonna give it. I'm not being I'm not too gonna, I'm not going to name specific. drop. I know exactly who you're talking about. He, uh... I want to say he headlined. He did. At Dead Crow, and everybody was like, why? Why? See? And if and if the unfiltered and offensive, the boys proud of unfiltered and offensive were there, we would have had no problems. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was funny. I've never seen anyone get as less amount of laughs as he had. From that far out of town. The Sour Barn's a hard room. I'll give him that. But everyone else got laughs. Yeah. And he's been doing this longer, I mean, by years. And well, he's, years. Got like a, he's got like a couple of albums, I think, doesn't he? I thought he said that he had a couple of albums that he made. But also, Nick, people lie. People <laughs> lie. <laughs> also, you can make an album just as easily as he can. That's true. It's like, uh, Who's that one, that fucking one uh, comic? Um, God damn it. <laughs> he did like a um he shot a special in like a uh bar and grill <laughs> where you can like That's hear, what you should do you can hear the clang of uh yeah i'm gonna record a cracker barrel <laughs> uh you know we're gonna talk about the canadians <laughs> I, I, what like, up my canadians yeah please somebody somebody please in the comments please tell me why that is because 
I want a good laugh. I don't know. Nobody likes Canadians. Wait, what does it say? What? <gasps> Hold on. Cracker Barrel told Newsweek that it was initially unaware of the video, but it will be looking into the matter further. And by that, they'll probably kill her. By that, they mean by, we investigated ourselves and we found no wrongdoing. Yeah, they're going to burn a cross in her front yard. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, the average age of Cracker Barrel? Like 60? <laughs> but right about that. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Um... It's a cool experience. Well, I don't know. Kid. When they're old, you probably can squeeze more money out of them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool when you're a kid. You get to look at the knickknacks. Get and, a little bottle and, of syrup. And get, you know, molested by your uncle in the bathroom. Yeah. You use the syrup as lubricant <laughs> until it gets really sticky. And then you use <laughs> a little peg game. Yeah. That's where it starts. Yeah. You start with the peg game. Get you mentally prepared for the pegging. And then you end with the peg game in real life. <laughs> But no, I'm I'm genuinely confused at uh wait, what does it say? Obviously racism has no place at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I think that's the one place it might belong. <laughs> yeah. I could keep, yeah, I could keep a straight face with that. <laughs> I'm gonna call bullshit on that. I'm gonna call bullshit right now. Down. Um Okay. Oh okay. Let's see. Wait, who's the worker? Let's see what she looks like. Okay, I believe she worked there. Yeah. We're going to find out. Hold on, we're going to... He overcame a subversively good defense... By Matt Hennessy, that some Canadians on the jury feeling sorry for the defendant and forced them to do the right thing. I wonder what they were talking about. <laughs> I wonder if it rhymed with Derek Chauvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'm not going. I'm not doing any more of this. This is too much. We're done. This is we're done with that one. This is too much. Uh, you know what? I'll put the article in the in the in the bio. Uh, this is this is funny. I will do that, but also this episode will probably get flagged. Good. What's gonna be the? You know, I'll I'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. You don't have to have a five minute segment discussing also, what it's gonna be. Um, R. Kelly is singing to people through the phone in prison now. <gasps> Wait, can. Could we call him up? I mean, it'll probably cost like 50 bucks to pay the phone bill alone. I will pay I'll happily any pay that. legal tender in the United States of America. We could do a phone interview with get, R. Kelly. To get Robert Kelly. The man himself. The urinator extraordinaire. The wet bandit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. What song would you get him to sing? Piss on you. I don't think he would do that. Should, that was one of his songs, wasn't it? He was upset that, that Dave Chappelle did that. He was upset. He was really upset. Uh, what, uh, Dave Chappelle did a um thing. He was like, I guess R. Kelly called him. He's like, man, how are you going to make a video about pissing on someone? He goes, motherfucker, how are you going to make a video about pissing on someone? That's really funny. But yeah, I think he uh, someone called him up on the jail phone and like uh, he like sang to the girls, like they were saying to the dude's daughter or whatever. Still sounds great. Yeah. Get him in the studio when he gets out. Voices don't deteriorate that much. Yeah, that would be amazing. And now he's going to be living clean. He's going to be working out. He's probably going to be eating good. He's going to come out looking like fucking uh, Gucci Man did when he got out of prison. Fucking yoked. Lot full with, with like pearly whites. Like full of a gallon. False white. Pissing teeth. gallons at a time. A <laughs> strong stream. That motherfucker is going to be uh, hydrated. <laughs> How? I mean, what's that cameo cost? Do you think? Uh, twenty six in it. Twenty six fifty. What? A minute? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe for the jail phone. Oh man! The fucked up thing about it is, I like R. Kelly's music. I can separate the art from the artist. Yeah. I mean, that was like you know. 
I mean, I don't listen to it, but I know what you mean. He had he had some fucking uh, he had some bangers. Uh, it's a, it's a real shame. It's a real shame. <laughs> Life in the big city. But hey, now that he's in jail, it kind of lowers his cost of things down a bit. Hey, now he can come out and be a, an R B singer and a rapper because he has street cred from going to prison. The more disgraced you are, the cheaper they are to get a hold of. Like I bet if we raised you know five six hundred bucks, we might be able to get Bill Cosby. I don't know. He's out. He's he's exonerated. Is he exonerated? Of I don't know. Of technicality. Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, all 36 women dropped the charges at once. They all died. Wait, he fucked older women? I doubt that. <laughs> what, what is? How old is he now? Like 80-something? I don't know. Old. Yeah. I mean, because look, he was big in the 1970s, well, which is was, well, 50 years doing, ago. Uh, he was doing stand-up. In Until, prison. yeah, in prison, and he's like making the fucking inmates like you think he would have a hard time in prison because of his charges. Everyone loved him oh, because he's Bill Cosby. He's one of the biggest stand-ups of he's, the last fifty he's years. America's father, America's dad. Sure, he goosed you. Maybe more like America's creepy uncle, but but, but he cared. He 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 didn't swear. He he took you on, and he didn't say the n word. And he took you on a he took you on that college visit, and he paid for that too. It's sure he goosed you, but he cared. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face, but um, nah, he was uh, he was Americans he was America's dad. Yeah. Are any is your dad perfect? Mine's not. Right. Is, is your no? He's not. Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> Thirty six times. <laughs> Just a. <laughs> <sighs> hey, we're firing at the hip, getting the cobwebs out. <laughs> this is this is this is fun. I haven't done this in a in a minute. We need to get a Jamie. We need to get a Jamie. We need an unpaid intern. It was supposed to be me, but you just think I'm funny. You're uh, <sighs> Jesus Christ, Ronnie Coleman is a <laughs> fucking unit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that guy. Yeah, there he is. I'd love Jesus Christ. <sighs> I thought it was so funny how like he was going back and forth with like another guy he was competing for for Mr. Mr. Olympia. <laughs> and they were like talking like cash shit <laughs> to each other. And they get up and they take their jackets off and they're like, You wanna go? You wanna go? And then the music starts and then they just start flexing at each other and it's like, really? So that's how you throw down. You get <laughs> naked and flex at each other. <laughs> what the fuck? And these are like monsters of men. Yeah, they're like 500 pounds of pure you know, muscle. They don't have to fight. They, I, don't, I guess they don't have to fight when you're that big and scary. Yeah. God, what a just a machine. I would have loved to have been his partner as a police officer. That would have been so cool. He is the only blue life that matters. <laughs> Ronnie <laughs> The car just sags as soon as he gets in. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, is that you're go- if some guy goes on the run, you're gonna have to be the one chasing him. And then uh, you're just fucking making a dope deal, and then you like all of a sudden a shadow just comes from <laughs> behind you. A building waddles up behind you. And it's like Jesus. Now, once you get him on the ground, you're good. Yeah, he he, he can just with one hand just. <laughs> But like, if you gotta chase him, oh no, I don't chase people. I, I feel like I feel like you could run in zigzags. Like he, he's like an alligator, and you just run in zigzags to get away from him. Yeah, what yeah. A fucking monster. Well, what's fun? Like that has that's kind of the similar like goof about Arnold Schwarzenegger, because there's pictures of him back when he was in the Austrian army. He was a tank driver of all things. So you see giant bodybuilder Arnold sticking out the little tiny hatch of the driver's seat of a tank. Yeah. Just barely squeezing into it. It's funny. Well, it, I think you were saying that's why Ronnie Coleman had to quit being a cop because they couldn't get uniforms big enough. He had to, like, custom make the shorts he was wearing. He had to cut them. He had, like, macrame bicycle shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, like, one. I mean, also, you know, it's like I've done well enough for myself. I've done my side. I've done my, you know, I can quit my day job at this point. I think it might have also been it. But, yeah, no. That was one thing that I think motivated is that yeah, he was Mr. Olympia or getting to that point. So, and he had sponsors probably, so he didn't have to like 
be a cop anymore. I think that was kind of exactly. like a passion for him anyways. He wanted to feel what it was really like to commit some black on black crime. <laughs> it, I'm joking. I'm a comedian. Relax. We tell jokes here. It, it, yeah, this is this is a a, a joke friendly place. This is the joke zone. <laughs> yeah, that sucks, man. Like it's been so long since I've been to Dead Crow. I don't even know how the environment is anymore. Like, can you be funny? It's probably been overrun by communists and queers. <laughs> yeah, Ellie's doing good, but I don't. She's a. Uh, I don't consider her a faggot. She's, no. Uh, She's cool. She's very cool. She's uh she's like Tim Dillon. She's a gay conservative. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I love her to death. I've known her for fucking ever. We had a good time at her show. Yeah, the last time I did stand up was at fucking Jimmy's at Rice Beach. Yeah, you were telling me like what was it, two or three weeks ago? Something like that. Not not too long ago. Yeah. But a bit ago. Yeah, longer than I like to go uh, stretch the old doing. funny muscle a little bit more again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I said, I started uh, a few days ago. I started to get that itch. I'm like, God damn it, I need to get back on stage. I'm starting to fucking fade into the back of the classroom. I might just start coming out shooting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see. Let's see how much time we've done. Yeah. Shut off five minutes in. Oh, longer than I thought. Scooter. Ah, what else is in the news? Or what else is going on in the world? Yeah, what is... Oh, yeah. Azalea Festival started. Oh, yeah. Azalea Festival is going on today. Completely forgot about that. Even though but all of my all of today's events were peripheral to it. Yeah. Um, does anyone care anymore? Well, now that we can't say things. <laughs> now, that was River Fest. What fest? River fest. Oh. Thought we had to bleep a word out. No. No. <laughs> no. I'm fucking with you. Um, um, I don't know. I mean, like, it's back. For whatever reason, I think they did Azalea Festival, like, the fill-in for all the COVID ones in August of last year. Hmm. Or, like, September. Dude, um, I can't remember the last one I went to. I don't know. <clears throat> the concerts are usually garbage. They had someone. Co- they had REO Speedwagon this time. Which I know you don't give a fuck about. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a boomer at heart with who loves boomer music. So, I mean, it didn't vo- motivate me to actually go and buy tickets. But could you there know. be a worse generation than the boomer? I like the music. <laughs> Must have been pretty cool to be a boomer. You had yeah. your, you yeah. had your conflict. No, no responsibility when you were younger, and then, eh. and then not raise your kids. Well, this is the, well, the, yeah, the one responsibility you have, you just flee to Canada to get away from it. Yeah, they were like they were hippies, and then they were like, "Fuck, well, we got to get a job." Or if you got drafted, they probably sent you to like Germany. Everybody always thinks that when you got drafted, you went to Vietnam, straight up. Most of the guys went to like Germany. Yeah. And then the guys who actually signed up or got tricked into it or did it to avoid jail time went to Vietnam. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, especially in the uh, the lovely estates of Seagate. Uh, there's a lot of people that wear uh, Vietnam veteran hats to the bar and stuff like that, and they come to find out they were like, they were nowhere close to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's the entitlement in Seagate. The entitlement of that generation. Yeah. Now, their parents who, did some shit. Who, who, yeah, now that is one of the greatest generations. But yeah, who completely pillaged the fucking planet. Well, and could and cared only for themselves. But here's the good and the bad of it. There's a war coming, and we're gonna have to fight it. Which means we're the next greatest generation. Which means our kids are gonna be the most entitled pieces of garbage that ever lived. I don't know, dude. I feel like our kids are the one that's gonna fight the real war. I don't think it's gonna get real, real bad for another twenty years or so. Maybe, but I think we're. 
in that 80 year 80th year period right now. have another good war uh well i was talking about this before it's like every 80 years or so at least in american history there's always been some sort of upheaval so you go back 80 years from now you get world war ii go 80 years back before that you get civil war 80 years before that you got the revolution and then 80 years before that uh, i don't know early 1700s yeah. let's say pirates <laughs> yeah that's um, true yeah for some reason uh we like to fuck around and find out it's it's the good men create hard times i li- i really like cycle. that quote which is it's true i mean our you know luckily i mean the media and everything blows it out of proportion we still have people in the military that will kick your like we could kick, we could still kick we haven't ass. kicked all the cool people out because of not getting vaccinated yeah that was something i thought was really funny as i remember there was a tweet towards the beginning of the Russian invasion where someone was like, we should send all the unvax draft, all the unvaccinated. It's like, motherfucker, you, all the, you kicked out all the unvaccinated people and they were all like the infantry guys. Yeah. They're all the, the really hard motherfuckers quit over COVID vaccines where you kicked them out. Yeah. That's what sucks. It's but like, no, it's, they, it's not like we don't have hard people still. I f- yeah. I feel like the, like the military, that's like this. Everyone's like, Oh, you shouldn't let trans or gay people in the military. Let them. The, they're not going to do combat anyways. More than likely, no. I mean, like I said, we we got enough we got enough bad motherfuckers to take care of that for us. Exactly. Now, if we keep going on the tra- trajectory we're currently on, we're going to be in a, in bad shape in ten years. Um, but you know, if something changes before then, it will be just fine. What is it? Uh, just hire Blackwater. Or, just outsource they, the entire military. Are they still in uh, business? Uh, they like rebranded to like Z or something like that. Xi Jinping. Yeah. Dude, it's got to be a fucking mercenary. Like back in the eighties, it was just like pick up magazine in grocery store. Do you have a gun? Were you in the army for an amount of time? Great. Here's another gun. Come to Africa. (laughs) Nowadays it's like, you know, you were green beret for 15 years. Okay. Now you can join. Yeah. It's not just like we accept basically everybody to go and kill random villagers in Southern Africa now. It's not like... <laughs> it's it's funny, but that is true. Dude, that's how it was in the, back in the day. It was crazy. Yeah. They, like, dude, there was, like, no accountability. No. It was, time. it was a crazy time. It was all the, you know... Uh, I'm, no, I'm not. That's going to go too far. I almost crossed the line. I'll tell you that. It was all Norn Rockwell's. No, not Norn Rock. Oh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that it's in North Carolina, isn't it? What? Uh, Blackwater wouldn't surprise me. Well, given that Fort Bragg is where the Green Berets are trained. Yeah. And you kind of want to probably be there, so you can just basically like kind of have it as a revolving door. Come out of the special forces, join the join Blackwater. Effectively, it would not surprise me. How how much do you think they get paid a year? Oh fuck, load man. But yeah, especially with their level of abilities. Yeah, they get paid a fucking lot. Um, there's a premium on having people that have been trained that well by the military. Like I think special for I think the army invests about two million dollars into each guy that makes it through special forces selection. Jesus, in Christ. their training costs alone. Yeah, it costs a lot to train people uh, or more specialized people. Why don't we just do what Russia does? Just go fucking take shit. You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? We fund, like, pretty much every other country besides, you know, like... There's a reason we don't have universal health care, and it's because we pay for all the for the military defense of all the countries that do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's crazy. And I know this could never happen. This is just a high thought. Like... We could just take shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just go under other countries and be like, this is ours. Guys. We were doing it in the 20s. What are you going to do? That's the thing. We were, people forget, we were in endless wars 100 years ago. Just nobody realized it. And we were in endless Except wars. Except it was in this hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't even over oil. It was over like bananas. Really? Yeah. We like, and like sugar. And dude, we occupied Honduras for like 20 like years. Or Honduras, or some central, some small Central American country. We had a twenty-year-long occupation from like nineteen hundred until like nineteen twenty-five. We had a bunch of small wars or conflicts we got into. We were out there slaughtering the Filipino 
insurgents in like the nineteen ten you know, the aughts under Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. We're doing all kinds of crazy shit. Now we just get and the CIA people to do And that's stuff like I didn't learn any like you're not gonna learn any of this stuff in public school. No. You're you're gonna learn uh the the British were bad and tried to tax us too much and we didn't like that. So we came over here and we won the war and that's where America and then we had black people as slaves and that wasn't cool. And then we fought eternally with each other and then we stopped that and then some some something, Barack Obama, Donald Trump. And that's pretty much public school history class. Don't forget to pick up your uh, gay conversion, <laughs> your hormone blockers on your way out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know. Don't call, forget to say gay. And don't forget to call your parents Nazis <laughs> and throw a brick through a window at BLM. You know. <laughs> we, we stand with Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. Put your mask on. Are you vaccinated? <laughs> Follow the science. <laughs> we support current thing. <laughs> And the uh, highest paid uh, unelected person in government is the science. Good night.